Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Surge of the Brawler Cafe uh, bringing you another proxy deck profile for the Armored Elite format. So, um, I thought that the next thing I should do is I should do what I think will be the best version, uh, probably the most cookie cutter version, probably the most popular version of what is looking to be uh, the strongest deck of our next format, uh, which is of course Chaos Maximus Pegatrix. So this is going to be Aquas and Pyrus. Uh, we'll get into why we want those two factions specifically as we go through the deck profile. Um, and yeah. Uh, so there's a couple things I want to talk about when it comes to rolling these Bakugan. Uh, so first with Pictrix Ultra. That didn't happen. Okay. Picked it up correctly, which is not what I actually want to happen here. Because I want to demonstrate an issue with this mold that you need to be aware of. Um, there it is. Okay, so basically, if you roll Pegatrix um, against its arrow, um, it will sometimes just jump off without its core. Uh, and obviously that is a problem. So you need to make sure that you are rolling it uh, with the arrow. Um, and if you do that, that'll never happen. It'll flip up properly and that just never happens. Uh, so how to tell, uh, the easy cheat sheet to tell is when the magnet is pointing down, um, the head this part, is, this part right here is the head, the part right next to its attribute symbol. Um, if that part is pointing towards you when the magnet is down, then that is the correct way. As long as you do that, you won't have any issues. Uh, so of course it's a character card, uh, 501. Um, this is the no effect version because the no effect version is not going to be available for a bit. Who knows how long. Uh, it comes with double shield, not a very good uh, uh, core lineup, but we don't really care about that. Um, we are, our goal in this deck is to not really have to battle with Pegatrix Ultra's base form if we can help it. Um, yeah, we don't, want, we don't want to be battling with it because like most likely we're going to lose even if we manage to steal... Uh, an opposing magic show or something like it's rather difficult to win with this base form because it is just so far below curve um, But those shields are rather helpful for this choice right here uh, But before we get into that uh, Aquos Hydorus He doesn't have anything fancy when it comes to rolling him. He's a core Bakon, so like uh, core Bakon are always much better when it comes to this. They're far less likely to have any sort of issues that will require you to roll them in any particular way. Um, and he is 404, of course. Um, and it gets plus 500 B, plus 5 damage on a helix. So on a plus 600, minus 3, we are hitting uh, 1500 B and 6 damage. Very, very good. Um, if you're a deck with a lot of helixes, you can uh, carry as well. Minus 200B plus 5 damage, of course, which will allow him to hit 14 damage, which is very good numbers for Might Mac or for contesting Might Mac. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but we only have one Helix, so generally we will want to roll with Aquas Hydras first, uh, so that we take away our opponent's ability to steal it. And if we're fighting another Pegatrix, well, we have Pegatrix ourselves, so we can deal with that uh, without too much trouble. And then as for Drago, uh, Drago has basically the exact same issue. Um, basically has the exact same issue. Is that the right way? No, that was that was along the arrow, which will not give you any issues. But I believe it happens a lot more consistently with Drago. Uh, his issue when you roll him against the arrow. Yeah. And he's a bit of a pain to close. Once you get that tail in, though, it's really easy. Uh, it's just that first part with getting the tail in. Okay. 
this is along the arrow. Sorry about that. Yeah, so when you roll him against the arrow, he will just fly off just like Pegatrix. Happens almost every time to my knowledge. Uh, so it's a bit of an issue. Um, but yeah, that's him. Um, I do not have a cheat sheet for telling uh, which way is which when he's closed, unlike with Pegatrix. Uh, so, you know, I think you're <laughs> good luck with that, I guess. Um, so, he is 900B, 2 damage. This is the highest B power we have in the game. Now, this is pretty interchangeable with uh, Pyrus Nobilius Ultra here. Um, you're only losing 50B here. Uh, now, there's a couple of factors that have made me choose Dragon Ultra over Nobilius Ultra. But these are pretty interchangeable. And if you want to run Nobilius Ultra instead, then feel free to do so. Um, but the reasons I'm doing this is, one, uh, on this team we have three shield cores. And two of those are going to be the Pyrus Chaos plus 400s. Um, so it's, uh, it's a lot more difficult versus with Nobilius for our opponent to steal the cores that we need to get to our highest value. Uh, because with Pegatrix, of course, we're not going to care about vanning on necessarily our highest value thing. Because we're just stealing all of our opponent's stuff anyways. Uh, so that isn't really a big concern. I hate having all these manual parts. Um, yeah. Um, now, in, in addition to that... Um, it's just high B power without needing any specific core type. So what's really great is if you're good at uh, targeting cores on your opponent's side of the field and stealing them, you can steal a magic shield with this and just be 1550. And this is uh, particularly worth running it over Nobilius in my opinion, because uh, since we're in a Patrick stack, we're going to end up grabbing a bunch of our opponent's cores and bring them over to our side of the, side of the field anyways. So at a certain point in the game, you're likely to have new magic shields on your side of the field that you did not have before, and you can take advantage of those with Dragonoid Ultra, um, and that, then he'll be 1550. So yeah, uh, that is why those three, uh, before we move on to the rest of the deck, let's talk about what course we're running. Uh, as previously established, uh, two of our shields are going to be Pyrus Chaos plus 400. Um, these are basically, because it covers both of these, and these are the ones that are going to be wanting, wanting to be using shields in the early game. Uh, then we've got a Helix, plus 600, minus 3 damage. Now, what you do with these three is kind of up in the air. I think you want um, two of these to be two gear, uh, gear cost reduction by two. Um, which two is really up to you. Um, you can go with these two. Uh, with plus 200 uh, minus 2 gear cost and plus 2 damage minus 2 gear cost and have this be a plus 6 or you can uh, do plus 200 plus 3 damage and minus 2 gear cost and plus 2 damage minus 2 gear cost and have this be another plus 400 shield to make it even harder for our opponent to put us in a position where we can't get Dragon Ultra to the value that we're aiming for. Um, which one is really up to you, up to your preferences. I personally feel like we're not really going to be contesting my Mac with this deck by grabbing Flaming Fists, so I don't find that too valuable. I think I'm going to go with this. The fish should always be a plus two damage, minus two gear cost, um, because we never want to be sitting on the fist anyways, and there's nothing else of value it can really give us. And also the Flaming Fist minus two gear cost is just like really good value because like if you have to stay on it, you're not losing that much compared to a normal Flaming Fist. So yeah um so yeah that is that let's move these over here and get into the rest of the deck Uh, 
All right. So, uh, as before, most of these are going to be proxies because, you know, I'm just here to show you what I've drafted, what I've done some testing with, but you don't need real cards to be able to do that, my boys. Uh, so, first up, we have, this is basically part of our reroll engine, three quick fire, it's free. Uh, we want to be able to get out cheap rerolls, especially with Pegatrix. If we have to super fuel its Evo out, we want to have an option that will allow us to immediately reroll to get its effect. Because the issue with super fueling out his her Evo is that you will be playing the Evo after you've opened, so you won't immediately get the effect. And just quick fire is just a nice reroll in general. Uh, free reroll is good as it for just itself and for the fact that it activates uh, our unopened shuns. Of course, it's also made good because of like the gear cost reduction so that we can like turn two, roll onto one, play Glaive, and then for free roll off. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, three copies of Deep Dive, draw a card, reroll your Bakon for one energy. Um, good for the reasons that rerolls tend to be good and have been made even better going into gear format. Um, Super Fuel. If there's anything really needs to be said, this is a staple in Py every Pyrus build for a reason, and we are in Pyrus for this reason, because as powerful as Maximus Pegatrix is, it's a 6 energy Bakugan, it's a 6 energy Evo with a very weak base form. Um, so we want to be cheating it out early, and that is why we're running Pyrus, because we want to be able to get it out as fast as possible, and Super Fuel helps us accomplish that. Uh, super fuel is not the ideal way to do it because as I just established, um, when you super fuel into it, uh, you have already opened by the time you have evolved, so you won't get that on open effect right away. Uh, so you would need an additional reroll to get that to activate or you would have to wait until the next turn. Uh, three copies of Holy Flame. I think Holy Flame should be going back in a lot of decks because a lot of the Armored Alliance Bakugan have instant, incidental Green Fist cores, and Green Fist cores uh, are great choices because they're not really accomplishing anything else for your strategy. They're the perfect cores to be giving your uh, gear cost reduction. Uh, so if part of our strategy is going to be rolling onto these reducing Green Fists and then re playing a gear and re-rolling off of it, um, then Holy Flame fits really nicely into that. If we happen to have a spare energy there, then we have the ability to play that Holy Flame for one energy for plus 600. It just synergizes very, very well. So I expect to see a lot more usage of Holy Flame, and I've been squeezing it into a lot more decks uh, going into this format. Uh, three copies of Blinding Ink, uh, two cost negated, three cost or less action, uh, just like, catch-all answer for a lot of B-Power things. It stops Wayne, just stops all kinds of things. All around very good. Three copies of Pyro Glitterator. This is the best dual faction card that currently exists. Pyrus Chaos, two cost for plus 700 B. Um, just what else needs to be said? Who needs to go through needing domination for Light's Courage when you just have plus 700 B for two energy. It's amazing and it's just absolute st stable status. Uh, two copies of Wayne. There have only been an increasing amount of powerful Evos and when, especially when we're in a deck that has two evilist Bakugan, well, he has an evil technically, but we're not gonna use it because it sucks. Um, we want to be able to disable our opponent's Evos uh, to make it easier for these to, to, to combat them. Wayne is just also, in general, a really powerful card like the energy to uh, B power value conversion you tend to get off of this card is absurd. Um, and it's just very threatening in general. Very good card to have. Uh, you might even want to up this to three copies. Three copies of Wave Slash. Combo this with any of our lower costed cards. And you get a plus 1000 B for three energy. Very efficient. Um, yeah. This is a stable in every build that uses Aquos for good reason. Three copies of Song of Fire. Uh, this is the ideal way to get out Pegatrix early because you can play this in the selection step. 
so that it's done before you have actually rolled out and thus before you've opened and thus you're able to immediately take advantage of the effect. Of course, having both of these in here gives us the opportunity to high roll on turn two for super fuel into Song of Fire into, into Maximus Pegatrix, which uh, is very, very scary when that happens. For our gear, we have three copies of Glimmering Glaive. This is currently the best gear that exists. Um, it's four cost plus 400B. And when you play this, you may attach a Baku core from the field to one of your Bakugan. Uh, this doesn't specify open Bakugan, but uh, we're assuming for now that this is just a misprint because that's never happened before. Uh, that shouldn't be possible, but if it does, that has a lot of implications uh, that we will go into in a different video if that ends up being the case. Um, but as long as we're on one of our gear cost reduction cores, this is reduced to two, but then you pick up the core and you re-roll and you, you lose the core, right? No. What you do is you play Glimmering Glaive for the reduced cost, then you respond to Glimmering Glaive's on-play effect with your re-roll. You are now on the new core before you have resolved the grab another core effect. Easy. You could also actually just respond to the play of Glimmering Glaive itself because you've already paid the cost at that point, so you don't need to be on that core anymore. Um, but regardless, yes, you can... As long as you have a re-roll, you just chain to it yourself and you get off the core, easy peasy. Uh, two energy, uh, if you're stealing a matter chill, that's two energy for plus a thousand. Like really absurd. Um, and we really wanna make sure we're putting these onto these Bakugan uh, so that they're, they're low, uh, like the, the, the fact that they don't evolve doesn't become an issue later in the game. Our big advantage engine boy, Shun Kazami, uh, three cost hero. When you play this, uh, when you open a Bakugan, you may draw a card. Turns all rerolls into cantrips, uh, allows us to build up passive advantage over time. Now, because this is Aquos Pyrus, we do have to talk a bit about Shun versus Dan. Uh, I tend to lean towards Shun because it is good to just be able to build up advantage. Like there are a lot of turns where, okay, I know I'm gonna lose this, I'm just gonna take this damage and get this out of the way, stuff like that. And you would rather be able to build up advantage in your hand um, to be able to utilize on later turns than, uh, than have to play that card right away. Also, Dan costs one more and that one more cost is really significant. Like that is really significant. That's a really big difference. Um, like it's hard to really understand without seeing it in play. It's hard to really put into words why that is so important, but like getting something out, like something being three cost versus four cost, is just a big, big difference in uh, how easy it is to play, how easy it is to combo later on in the game. Like four is just a lot harder to, uh, to fit into things um, and make flow as well as Shun does. Our only Evo in the deck, of course, Maximus Pictrix Ultra herself, 1100B, seven damage, and when it opens, we take all Baku cores attached to our opponent's Bakugan. Very powerful. All right, and why we need a draw engine in the first place? Because we're a deck that's completely revolving around this, and if we don't get to this, we're gonna lose. Um, <laughs> we're gonna lose if we don't get to this because this is too small. Um, so yeah, that's why that's there. Um, and then for our flip lineup, we have three copies of Confuse and two copies of Stand Together. Uh, we're obviously going to be getting Domination via Pegatrix and Glimmering Glaive helps us get there as well. Um, Matter Shields and Saving Fists are still going to be the most common core types, even with Bakon like Hydras and Dragonoid uh, diversifying things a bit. Uh, those are still going to be by far the most common ones. So this is a really good flip um, and Stand Together is just like good keyword flip. Um, for a deck like this, rather easy condition for us to turn on, just good all around. And that's all there is to be said about this deck. Um, I do have some other versions of Pegatrix in mind. Um, basically the same attribute com faction combinations that I ran for HTN, uh, which would be Paris Ventus and Aquos Ventus. Um, but in this case, I think Aquos Pyrus is much better because unlike HTN, where it's like, okay, uh, if I don't have, without super fuel, well, I'm not rolling this until turn three at the earliest anyways. So it doesn't really, super fuel doesn't really matter that much. 
But in this case, because we're dealing with a six cost evolution, we really want that acceleration that Paris brings us. Um, it's really, really important. Um, so yeah, also power blade is just nice to have. Um, and also like the larger pool of rerolls that Paris gives us, um, because of, because of Pegatrix being an unopen effect and, uh, your opponent trying to get around Pegatrix, uh, will require you to have the rerolls to counteract that, like stuff like Aquafine, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to really be said. Um, you, some other ideas that you might want to try and fit into a deck like this, uh, Honey Trap really comes to mind because like protecting Pegatrix, pretty important, but, uh, but Blinding Ink does a lot of that. But if you want to fit that in, then, you know, go for, go for it. I would probably, probably drop Holy Flame because Holy Flame is by far the least important card in this deck. So that is what you would go for. Um, what else other than that? Um... Uh, Hail Bracers might be worth looking into um, because Hail Bracers is also a very good gear. Like four cost for plus one thousand B permanently is very very powerful, um, and especially when you're able to put the that on these two mock on that have strong base forms um, and don't have evolutions that are good. Um, something like Hail Bracers to help supplement them is very good. But I feel like the Ring Lave is going to be enough. Um, I feel that should be enough, but Hail Bracers is something that you might want to look into if you're interested in that. Uh, things that would be, uh, that would be slots to take out. Um, I feel Stand Together isn't the most important thing in the world. And as I already mentioned, Holy Flame is another card that isn't integral. So if you want to switch things around, try out cards like that. And those are the things that you would, uh, you would go for cutting first. Um, with that said, this is Higher Surge of the Brawler Cafe, signing off.